thing I didn't see. Look here, Bertha. I didn't see anybody out there with them pigeons before. Mm, no, no. Look at this. That pigeon done flopped out of bottom hand, and he about to have a fit. <laughs> he down there on his hands and knees behind that bush, looking all over that pigeon that on the outside of the yard. You see that? Come on, eat your breakfast, and leave that man alone. He ain't seen it yet. All that mumbo-jumbo nonsense. I don't know why I put up with it. You don't say nothing when you bless the house. I just go along with that because of you. You round here sprinkling salt all over the place, got pennies lined up across the threshold, all that heebie-jeebie stuff. <laughs> I just put up with that because of you. I don't pay that kind of stuff no mind. And you want to go down to the church and come home and sprinkle salt all over everything. Well, it don't hurt none. I can't say it can help. <laughs> don't hurt none. <laughs> <laughs> he done found that pigeon and now he's talking to it. His biscuits be ready in a minute. You on a big circle with that stick. And he dancing around. I know he better not. Hey! Bottom! Hey! Don't be hopping around and stepping in my vegetables! Hey! Bottom! Watch where you step in! Hey! Leave that man alone! I don't care how much you want to be dancing around. Just don't be stepping in my vegetables. Bottom, don't hurt nobody. He ain't even thinking about your vegetables. I know he ain't. That's why y'all there stepping in them. <laughs> what does the Johnson say down there? I told him if I had the tools, I could go out here and find me four or five fellows and open my own shop instead of working for Mr. Olowski. Find me four or five fellows and teach them how to make pots and pans. Because one man making 10 pots is the same as five men making 50. He told me he'd think about it. Mm, maybe he'll come and see it your way. He asked me to sign the house over to him. You know what I thought of that out there. Mm, he'll come and see your way. <clears throat> I'm going up to talk to Sam Green. Mm -hmm. More than one way to skin a cat. I'm going up to talk to him. See if he got more sense than Mr. Johnson. I can't get nowhere working for Mr. Olowski selling sea lake five or six pots on the side. I'm going to talk to Sam Green. See if he loaned me the money. <laughs> Got that cup. He done killed that pigeon. He's pouring his blood in that little cup. I believe he drank that blood. <laughs> Seth Holly, come on and eat your breath. You know about Don't be drinking no pigeon blood. I don't know what he did. Go, go out. <laughs> he's going to dig a little hole. Mm. And then he's going to bury that pigeon. And he's going to pray over that blood, mm. pour it on top, mark out a circle, and then come on in the house. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Pouring that blood on top. When they going to put you back working daytime? Told me two months ago they was going to put you back working daytime. That's what Mr. Olowski told me. I got to wait till he say when. He tell me what to do. I don't tell him. It'll drive me crazy to speculate on that man's wishes when he don't know what he want to do himself. Well, I wish they put you back working daytime. Working all these hours of the night don't make no sense. Don't make no sense for that boy to go out here and get so drunk they lock him up either. Who? Who that got locked up for being drunk? That boy that stand upstairs, Jeremy. I stopped down on Logan Street on the way home from work, and one of the fellas told me all about it. Said they seen it when they arrested him. I was wondering why I ain't seen him this morning. You know I don't go for all that Karen Norm. I told him when he came here, he shouldn't be, what you doing bringing them weeds in my house? Out there messing up my vegetables and now you want to bring them weeds in my house? Morning, Seth. Morning, Sister Bertha. Out there messing up my garden with them things. Ought to pull up all them weeds. Some guy was by here to see you this morning, Mama. He was out there in the yard. I told him to come back later. You look sick. What's the matter? You ain't eating right? What if I was sick? You ain't getting near me with none of that stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, your biscuit's getting fat and fat. Where Jeremy? I don't see him around this morning. He used to be around riffing and rapping on a Saturday morning. I know where he at. I know just where he at. They got him down there in the jail, getting drunk and acting a fool. He down there where he belonged with all that foolishness. Mr. Potty Boy's got it, huh? Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna do nothing but hold on to him for a little while. He's gonna be back here, hungrier than a mule, directly. I don't go for all that carrying on. This was my daddy's house. I don't have no riffraff, no drunkards, or no fools around here. That boy just got a lot of country in him. 
He ain't been up here for two weeks. It's gonna take a while for he to work all that country out of it. These niggas come up here with that old backward country style of living. It's hard enough without all that ignorant kind of acting. Ever since slavery been over with, ain't been nothing but foolish acting niggas. They don't know they need people to help in these mills, help put in these roads. White fellas come from all over the world. White fellas come over here and in six months got more than what I got. But these niggas <laughs> keep on coming. Walking, riding, carrying their bottles. That boy didn't carry the guitar all the way up here from North Carolina. What are you gonna do with that guitar? What are you gonna find out? This is the city. Niggas coming up here from the backwoods, from the country, carrying bottles and guitars, looking for freedom. Where well, they got a rude awakening. Oh, I forgot you was coming today. Come on in. If it ain't roughly for sea leg, the people find it himself. What say they buy? I say about my shiny man. You got to tell me something. I'm going to give you my dollar. I'm looking to get a report. Seth, uh, I got eight for you. What's this? What's this you giving me? What am I supposed to do with this? Make me some dustpans out of them. Everybody's asking about dustpans. All right. They can cost you 15 cents a piece, 10 cents to put a handle on. I'll give you 20 cents with the handle. All right, but I ain't gonna give you up a 15 cent with a sheet metal. Right, that was 25 cent a piece with a sheet metal. That's what we agreed upon. This low grade sheet metal. This ain't worth but a dime. I'm doing you a favor giving you 50 cents. You know this sheet metal ain't worth no 25 cent. Don't come to me talking no 25 cent stuff over no low grade sheet metal. All right, all right. Just 15 cent. Just make me some sheet, some duck pans out of them, would you please? Thank you. Sit on down there, Steely. Give me a cup of coffee and a biscuit. Where you coming from this time? Well, I've been up river, all along the monitor house, found ranking, and uh, all up through uh, Little Washington. Did you find anybody? <laughs> I found Sadie Jackson up ranking. My mother stays down there in uh, Scott's Bar. Said she hadn't heard from her and didn't know where she was at. I find her up there, uh, Brad on Enoch Street. Yeah. She bought a fryer pan from me. You were out there finding everybody. How come you ain't found my shiny man? And the only shiny man I done seen is the niggas working on the road game with the sweat listening on them. No. You better tell this fella. He shine like a new money. Well, I done told you. I can't find nobody without a man. You know, one of these hot biscuits, Steven? This fella don't have no name. I call him John. Because it was up around John's town where I seen him. I ain't even so sure he one special fella. That shine could pass on to anybody. He could be anybody shine. Well, what's he look like besides being shine? You know, there are a lot of shiny niggas. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a man I seen out on the road. He had no special look. Just a man walking toward me on the road. And he, he come up to me and asked me if I knew which way the road went. I told him everything I knew about the road, where it went and all. And he asked me, did I have anything to eat? Because he was hungry. Say he ain't had nothing to eat in three days. Well, I'd never be out there on the road without a piece of uh, dried meat or an orange or an apple. Or, so I give this fella an orange. He take and eat that orange. And he told me, come and go along the road with him a little ways, that he had something he wanted to show me. Uh, well, he had a look about him, made me want to go with him, see what he was going to show me. We walked on a bit. And it's getting kind of far from where I met him when it come up on me all of a sudden, we ain't going back the way he had come from. We going back my way. Since he said he ain't knew nothing about the road, I asked him about this. He said he had a voice inside him telling him which way to go. And if I come and go along with him, he was going to show me the secret of life. Well, quite naturally, I followed him. <laughs> Fella going to show you the secret of life ain't to be taken lightly. Now, we get near this bend in the road. I got a secret of life. 
And boom, bam, I want to hear about this. We get near this bend in the road, and he told me to hold out my hands. Then he rubbed them together with his. I looked down, I see they got blood on them. He told me, take and rub it all over me. Say that it was a way of cleaning myself. Then we went around the bend in that road. Got around that bend and seemed like we ain't in the same place. Turned around that bend and looked like everything was twice the size that it was. The trees and everything bigger than life. Those sparrows. Big as eagles. I turn around, look at this fella. He had this light coming out of him. I had to cover up my eyes to keep from being blinded. He's shining like new money with that light. He shined until all the light seemed to seep out of him. Then he was gone. And I was by myself in this strange place where everything was bigger than life. I wandered around there trying to find that road, trying to find my way back from this big place. I looked over. I see my daddy standing there. Oh. He, he was the same size as he always was. Except for his, his hands and his mouth. He had a great big old mouth. Looked like it took up his whole face. And his hands. His hands were as big as hams. Like they was too big to carry around. My daddy called me to him. Say he had been thinking about me. That it grieved him to see me in the world carrying other people's songs, not having one of my own. Told me he was gonna show me how to find my song. Then he carried me further into this strange place till we come to this ocean. Then he showed me something there. I ain't got words to tell you. But if you stand to witness it, oh, you done seen something there. I stayed in that place a while. My daddy taught me the meaning of this thing I had seen showed me how to find my song. I asked him about the shiny man. He said he was the one who goes before and shows the way. He said there was lots of shiny men. And if I ever saw one again before I died, I would know that my song had been accepted and worked its full power in the world. And I could Lay down and die, a happy man. <laughs> man who doesn't left his mark on life. On how people cling to each other. Out of the truth they find in themselves. Then he showed me how to get back to the road. I came out to where everything was his own size. <clears throat> And I had my song. I had the binding song. I choose that song because that's what I seen most when I was traveling. People walking away and leaving one another. So I takes the power of my song and I binds them together. I've been binding people ever since. That's why they call me binder. Just like glue. I sticks people together.
Maybe they ain't supposed to be stuck sometimes. You ever think of that? <laughs> oh, I don't do it lightly. Cost me a piece of myself every time I do. I'm a find of what cleans. You got to find out if they clean first. You can't find but don't clean. What's that got to do with the secret of life? Now, I thought you said he was going to show you the secret of life. And that's what I'm waiting to find out. Oh, he showed me all right. But you still got to figure it out. <laughs> Can't nobody figure it out for you. Mm -hmm. You got to come to it on your own. That's why I'm looking for the shiny man. Well, I'll keep a lookout for him. Oh, what you got there, sir? I got some cabbage and tomatoes. I got some green beans coming in real nice. I'm going to take a start with a grapevine out there next year. And Tara said he's going to give me a piece of his vine. I'm going to start that out there. Mm. Well, how many, uh, Pots you got for me. I got six. That's six dollars minus eight on top of the fifteen for the sheet metal. Come to a dollar twenty out to six dollars, leave me four dollars and eighty cents. Four dollars and eighty cents. <laughs> All right. That's four dollars. Eighty cents. How many of them dust pans you want? As many as you can make out of them sheets. You can use that many. I get the cutting on them sheets, figuring out how to make them dustpans. Ain't no telling how many I'm liable to come up with. And I can use them. And many more the next time. All right, I'm going to hold you to that now. Uh, uh, thank you for that biscuit, Mr. Burton. You're welcome anytime, Oh, uh, Which way you headed? I'm headed down uh, north this time to Weird, all through West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Putting in new roads down that way. Make traveling real easy. I can be back south. That's what I hear. All up around here, too. Got a fella staying here working on the road over there by the Brady Street Bridge. Yeah? Man, that's gonna make traveling real nice. Uh, thanks for the cabbage head. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll see you on Saturday. Talking all that nonsense to that man, all that shouting man nonsense. You know it ain't no nonsense. Brother know it ain't no nonsense. I don't know if Sea Leg know or not. Seth, when you get to making them dust pans, bring me a coffee pot. What's the matter with your coffee, woman? Ain't nothing wrong with your coffee. Don't you make some good coffee bond? Oh, I ain't worried about the coffee. I know she makes some good biscuits. I ain't studying no coffee pot, woman. You heard me tell a man I was gonna make as many dust pans as those sheets could make. And here you come. Can you make me a coffee pot? <laughs> man, hush up and go on and make me the coffee pot. I hear Piney Boys had you. Buy me $2 for nothing. I ain't done nothing. I told you when you come on here, everybody know my house. Know these is respectable quarters. Everybody knows Seth Holly keep a good house. I don't put up with no carrying on. This was my daddy's house. This house been decent a long time. I ain't done nothing, Mr. Seth. I stopped by the works Miss Love and got me a bottle. Me and Rumpa Lee from Alabama had us a half a pint. We was fixing to cut the half in the two when they stopped us. Asked us if we was working. We told them we was putting in a road over yonder and it was our pity. They snatched all of us and they took two whole dollars from us. Me and Rumpa Lee didn't even have a chance to take a drink when they grabbed us. I don't go for all that carrying on and such. Seth. Leave the boy alone. You know the police do that. They got too many people out on the street and they take some of them off. You know that. I ain't gonna have folks talking. Ain't nobody talking nothing. That's all in your head. Jeremy, you want some grits and a biscuit? Some coffee? Damn, girl. They gave us a thing to eat last night. I'll take a big old bowl of you know. Me and my daughter looking for a place to stay in. Sign said you got room. <laughs> you 
ain't got no rooms, mister. We can go somewhere else. How long you plan on staying? Don't know. Two weeks or more. Rooms is two dollars a week. We serve meals twice a day. That's two dollars for room and board. Pay up in advance. It's a dollar extra for the girl. The girl stays in the same room. Well, do she eat off the same plate? I need that extra dollar to buy some food. I ain't got no extra dollar. I was going to ask your missus if she could help with the cooking and cleaning and whatnot. Her helping out don't put no food on the table. I need that dollar to buy some food. I'll give you 50 cents. She don't eat much. All right, but 50 cents don't get you but half a portion. Seth, she can help me out. Let her help me out. I can use some help. Well, rooms is $2 a week. Pay up in advance. Saturday to Saturday. You want to stay on come Saturday? That's two more dollars. My name's Bert. This is my husband, Seth. You got Bonham and Jeremy over there. Anybody else stay here? They don't want here now. Folk come and go. They only want here now. You want a cup of coffee and some biscuits? We done ate breakfast already. Where you coming from, mister? I didn't get your name. Name's Earl Loomis. This is my daughter, Zonia. Where you coming from? We come from all over. We have the road leaders. That's which way we go. If you're looking for a job, I'm working putting in a road over there down there by the bridge. They can't get enough men. I'm always looking to take somebody on. I'm looking for a woman named Martha Loomis. She my wife. Got married legal, got papers and all. Martha Loomis? Know some Marthas? I don't know no Loomis. You got to see Rutherford Sea Leg. You want to find somebody. Rutherford Sea Leg's a first class people finder. How she look? Maybe I see him. She's a brown skin woman. Got long, pretty hair. I don't know. I might have seen him. <laughs> you got to see Rutherford Sea Leg. You want to find somebody. Uh, you, you give him one dollar uh, to get his na her name on his list, and after she get her name on his list, Rutherford C. Lake go right out there and find her. I got him looking for somebody for me. You say he find people. How you find him? You just missed him. He going down river now. You got to wait till Saturday. He going down river with his pots and pans. He come see Seth on Saturdays. You got to wait till then. Come on. Show you to your room. Miss Bertha, uh, I'll take that biscuit juice and get that fellow if you don't mind. Say, Mr. Mind, they got somebody like that around here sure enough? Somebody that find people? Rutherford Sea Lid. He go around selling pots and pans and whatever house he come to, he write down the name and address of whoever lived there. So if you looking for somebody, quite naturally, you got to go and see him. Because he the only one know where everybody live at. I ought to look for this old gal likes to know. It'd be nice to see her again. Jerry, huh? the day's late for you to pull them sheets off your bed and set them outside your door like I told you. Oh. I'll set you out some cleaners. Mr. Piney Boy's done doing your good time last night, Jeremy. What you got planning for tonight? Oh, they got me scared to go out, Mr. Biden. They might grab me again. You ought to take your guitar and go down to Cephas. Cephas got a gambling place down there on Wiley Avenue. You ought to take your guitar and go down there. Oh. They got a guitar contest no, no, down no, there. No, Mr. Bynum, I don't play no contest, Mr. Bynum. I had one of them white fellows kill me that. I ain't been over in that contest since. <laughs> White fella beat you playing guitar. Nah, he ain't beat me. <laughs> I was just sitting at home fixing to sit down and eat when somebody came to my house and got me. <laughs> Told me that this white fella gonna give a prize to the best guitar player he could find. Hmm. So I take up my guitar and I go down there. And somebody gone up and got Bobo Smith and brought him down there. Him and another fella called Huda. Oh, Huda couldn't play no guitar. But Bobo, Bobo gonna go at it a while. This fellow staring at see he was the one gonna give a prize. So me and Bobo started playing for him. Bobo played something, and then I tried to play something better than he played. Oh, who the he just hollered and banged at the guitar. This man was the worst guitar player I've ever seen. So after we played a while, I seen what Bobo was getting his attention at his wife, though. 
He'll play something while he'll be playing it. He'll be smacking the side of his guitar. So it's how I feel playing more than he was. So I started doing it too. Oh, white fella couldn't tell no difference. He ain't know as much about guitar playing, just as much as he would have did. So after we play a while, white fella called us to him. Said he couldn't make up his mind. Said all three of us was the best guitar player. We had to split the prize between us. Then he gave us 25 cents and 8 cents a piece. That's 8 cents a piece and a penny on the side. I'll bet you that cured you of that. Oh, yeah, Mr. Brian. <clears throat> Cephas ain't like that. Uh, Cephas give you a whole dollar and a drink of whiskey. When they be down there, Mr. Brian? Be down there every night. Music don't know no certain night. <laughs> you go down to Cephas with them people, and you liable to end up in a rave. Or oh, in jail, sure enough. I don't know why I'm going to tell you that. That's where the music at. That's where the people at. The people down there making music and enjoying themselves, having a good time. Some things is worth taking a chance going to jail about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeremy ain't got no business being down there. They got some women down there, Mr. Brian? They got women down there, sure. There's women everywhere. The women be where the men is so they can find each other. Some old gals be coming out when we putting in them roads, hanging around trying to snatch somebody. How come some of them try and try to snatch hold of you? Oh, I don't want them kind. Them, the desperate kind. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than the desperate woman. Oh, you tell them you're going to leave them, they get the crying and carrying on. That just means you're going to get away quicker. Then they get the cutting up your clothes and things trying to keep you staying. Desperate woman. Ain't nothing but trouble for a man. <laughs> <laughs> Something ain't right about that fella. What's wrong with him? What'd he say? Take him upstairs, try to talk to him. He ain't for no talking. Say he been trapped. Say he coming over from Ohio. Say he peeking in the church. Say he looking for Martha Pentecost, talking about that's his wife. Well, how you know it's the same Martha? Lots of people named Martha. He could be talking about anybody. <laughs> Did you see that little girl? I didn't hook it up until he said it. That little girl looked just like Martha Pentecost. That's fine. Bye, bye. I thought that little girl looked just like Martha Pentecost. <laughs> I still say he could be talking about anybody. Ain't no doubt about who he was talking about. He described her right down to her toes. <laughs> well, what did you tell him? I ain't tell him nothing. I don't tell that fella nothing, not the way he looked. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else did he say? I told you it wasn't for no talking. I just told him where the outhouse was and to keep that gal off the front porch and out of my garden. He asked if you mind setting up a hot tub for the gal. That was about the gist of it. Well, I wouldn't let it worry me if I was you. Come on, get to sleep. Now, he said he's looking for Martha, and he a deacon in the church. That's what he said. Do he look like a deacon to you? He might be. But I ain't got no special say on whether he a deacon or not. Well, if he the deacon, I sure like to see the preacher. <laughs> <laughs> He looked like one of them mean looking niggas and killed somebody gambling over a quarter. Oh, this fella ain't no gambler. Gamblers wear nice shoes. <laughs> this fella got on clock hoppers. He been out there walking up and down them roads. <laughs> hey, you, you looking for the back door, sugar? There it is. You can go on out there and play. It's all right. You can go out there and play. Just don't go getting in my garden and don't be messing in my workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I met no gal one time, Mr. Byron. Mm -hmm. Things ain't go right, but I don't know what happened, but she was supposed to come. I'm looking for a man named Bynum. Lady told me to come back later. Yeah, sure. Mr. Byron, somebody to see you. Come and see me, huh? Are you the man they call Bonham? The man folks say can fix things. Depend on what he fixing. I can't make no promises, but I got a powerful song in some matters. Can you fix it so my man come back to me? <laughs> come on in. How was that now? You gotta help me, mister. I don't know what else to do. Depend on how all the circumstances of the thing come together, how all the pieces fit. 
I done done everything I know how to do. You gotta make them come back to me. <laughs> it ain't nothing to make somebody come back. I can fix it so he can't stand and be away from you. I got my roots and powders. I can fix it so wherever he's at, this thing will come up on him and he won't be able to sleep for seeing your face. Won't be able to eat for thinking of you. That's what I want, make him come back. The roots is a powerful thing. I can fix it so one day he walk out his front door, he won't be thinking of nothing. He won't know what it is. All he knows is that a powerful dissatisfaction done set in his bones and can't nothing he do make him feel satisfied. He'll set his foot down on the road and the wind in the trees be talking to him. And everywhere he step on the road, that road will give back your name and something will pull him right up to your doorstep. Now I can do that. I can take my roots and fix that easy. But maybe he ain't supposed to come back. Mm -hmm. And if he ain't supposed to come back, and he'll be in your bed one morning and it'll come up on him that he in the wrong place, that he lost outside of time from his place that he's supposed to be in. <coughs> Then both of you be lost and trapped outside of life. There ain't no way for you to get back into it because you lost from yourselves, from where the places come together where you're supposed to be alive. Your heart kicking in your chest with a song worth singing. Just make them come back to me. Make his feet say my name on the road. I don't care what happens. Just make them come back. What's your man? He was born in Alabama, and he come to West Texas and find me, and we come here. And we had three years before he left. Said I had a curse prey on me and started walking down the road and they never come back. Somebody told me, say you can fix things like that. He just got up one day, set his feet down on the road, and walked away. You gotta make him come back, mister. Did he say goodbye? He said nothing. Just started walking down the road. I could see where he disappeared. Didn't look back. Just kept walking. Can't you fix it so he come back to me? I ain't got no curse prey on me. I know I ain't. What made him say you had a curse prey on you? somebody trying to keep you from being bound up. And he done going on back to whoever it is cause he already done bound up to her. Ain't nothing to be done. Somebody else got a powerful hand in this and ain't nothing to be done to break it. You gotta let him go find where he's supposed to be in the world. Jack didn't go home and you, you telling me to just forget about it? Searching 
for your doorstep right now. Ain't no need you fretting over Jack Carpenter. Right now, he's a strong thought in your mind. But every time you catch yourself fretting over Jack Carpenter, you just push that thought away. You push it out of your mind, and that thought will get weaker and weaker till you wake up one morning, won't even be able to call him up on your mind. Now, you take this, and you sleep with it up under your pillow, and it'll bring good luck to you, draw it to you, just like a magnet. Won't be long before you forget all about Jack Copper. How much do I owe you? Whatever you got, right there. Take that. You sleep with that up under your pillow. You'll be all right. I overheard what you had told Mr. Bynum. Had O'Gall did that to me. Woke up one morning and she was just gone. She took off the parts unknown. I woke up that morning and the only thing I could do is look around for my shoes. I just looked around for my shoes and just got out of there. That's the only thing I could think of to do. She ain't said nothing? I just looked around for my shoes and got out of there. Jack ain't said nothing either. Just walked off. Some men do that. One is two. I ain't going off looking for her. I just let her go. Figured she had time to come to herself. Wasn't no use to me standing the way. Where you from? Texas. I was born in Georgia, but I went to Texas with my mama. She dead now. Was picking peaches and fell dead away. I come up here with Jack Cole. I'm from North Carolina, down around Raleigh, where they got all the tobacco. I've been up here for two weeks. I like fine, except for... I gotta find me a woman. <laughs> you got a nice look to you. Look like you got men standing in your door. Is you got men standing in your door to get a good look at you? I ain't had nobody since Jack left. A woman like you need a man. Maybe let me be your man. I got a nice way with the woman. Well, that's what they tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Jack's coming back. I'll be your man until he comes. A woman shouldn't be by lonesome. Let me be your man. I just can't go through life piecing myself out to different men. I need a man who wants to stay with me. Oh, oh I can't see what's going to happen. Maybe I'll be the man. I don't know. Wanna come along the roads a little ways with me? I don't know. It seems like life says it's gonna be one thing and it ended up being another. I'm tired of going from man to man. Life is like you gotta take a chance. Everybody gotta take a chance. Can't nobody see what's gonna be. Come on, take a chance with me. At least let me come and see you where you stand. I got a room up on bed, but me and Jack had a room to get up to. Then what's the address? I'll come by and get you tonight. I'm going to see this and I'm going to play my guitar. Play guitar? I play like I'm born to it. I live at 1727 Bedford Avenue. I'm going to see if you play guitar like you say. <laughs> I please the sugar and I ain't all I do. I got a 10 pound hammer and I know how to drive it down. Good God, I'm going to hit my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> That kind of talk now. <laughs> if you're gonna come by and get me, uh, I need to go home and straighten up for you. Oh, I'll be by at 8 o'clock. How's 8 o'clock? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you forget all about Jack Carver. Come on now. <laughs> Gotta get home and fix up for you. <laughs> all right, 8 o'clock, sugar. <laughs> Came back home just pulling us 
skip, just pulling a skip. I went upstairs to make my bed. I made a mistake and bumped my head. Just pulling a skip, just pulling a skip. I went downstairs to milk the cow. I made a mistake and milk the sap. Just pulling a skip, just pulling a skip. Tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow, tomorrow in the bone. Uh, how? What's your name? Zoe. <laughs> what kind of name is that? It's what my daddy named me. My name is Ruben. You standing Mr. Sephos? Yeah. That's your daddy I seen you with this morning? I don't know. What you seen me with? I saw you with some man. Had on a great big old coat. You was walking up to Mr. Sephos. Oh! He had on a hat too. Yeah. That's my daddy. You like Mr. Seth? I haven't seen him much. My grandpa say he a great big old wimpin. Say, how come you living in Mr. Seth's house? You don't got no house? We're going to find my mother. Where's she at? I don't know. We gotta find her. We just go all over. Why you gotta find her? What happened to her? She ran away. Why she run away? I don't know. My daddy says some man named Joe Turner did something back to him once that made her run away. Maybe she coming back? You don't gotta go looking for her? We ain't there no more. She couldn't come back when he wasn't there. My daddy said she ran off and left us, so we're going to look for her. What are you going to do when you find her? He didn't say. He just said we got to find her. Your daddy say how long you stand in Mr. Seth's house? He don't say much, but we never stay too long nowhere. He said we got to keep moving until we find her. Ain't no kid talking living around here. Hey, me a friend. Well, he died, though. He was the best friend I ever had. Me and Eugene used to keep secrets. I still got his pigeons. He told me let him go when he died. He said, Reuben, promise me when I die you'll let my pigeons go. But I kept them to remember him by. Even when I get to be a grown up, I'm just always going to have Eugene pigeons. Bye. 